Now, there are endless arguments, okay, about all of the detailed and complex issues surrounding the history of the Bible and manuscript evidence, and, and there's much to talk about and to discuss and to research and yada, 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 right? But the bottom line is either we believe what God said about his word or we don't. That's, at the end of the day, what it all boils down to. Now, I was looking at my office today. I've gotten rid of, I, I don't have half the books I used to have. As I've gone through them and stuff, I've given a lot of them away and, and gotten rid of a lot of them. But I still have over 50 books just on the Bible issue. I don't know how many. I didn't count them all, but I stopped at 50. There's over 50 in there just on this issue of um, the King James Bible versus the modern versions and the history of the Bible and the manuscript evidence and all of these things. And, of course, when I was going through college, I studied these things. And over the years... I've continued to look into them and study these things. I, really, I, I mean, I've spent much time researching the issue. But we don't have to prove with all that extra stuff, with all the books written by man, and with all our homework and all our research, we don't have to prove the King James Bible's Word of God because it proves itself. <laughs> In other words, the evidence speaks for itself when you study the Word of God. You know it's the Word of God. And it comes down to a faith position. That's what we're talking about tonight. The most important thing about all of this, and we're going to get into some stuff later on in the series about the history of the Bible and manuscript evidence. Not, not real deep, but just some things that are helpful to know. And it's okay to look at that. And that's interesting. But at the end of the day, you either believe God or you don't. That's really the issue here. So, the Bible says... In Hebrews 11, 3, through faith we understand. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Now some people say, well, if I look at all the evidence and I do all the homework and I do all the research and I read all these books written by men, then I'll understand the King James Bible is the Word of God. No, you got it backwards. It, it, the Bible doesn't say, through understanding we have faith. <laughs> It says, through faith we understand. So in other words, I believe what God said about his word, and I'm looking to see, okay, I know there is the word of God's available today. Where is it? Then I take this book and look at it. It meets all the criteria. I say, that's, that's it. And it just proves itself to be the word of God. Now, I'm going to focus in this evening on the faith issue, but I'm going to follow this up, Lord willing, next week, talking about some of the evidence. Because, you know, faith is not a blind leap into the dark. <laughs> Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Notice the words substance and evidence. Now it concerns things not seen. You've got to take God at his word, but there's a solid foundation here. This is not superstition. It's not superstition for me to believe the King James Bible. I mean, it, it, it is very logical, actually. <laughs> but again, I want to approach this by faith, and that's so important that we do that. Now, the Word of God is not like any other book. You don't approach this book like any other book written by man, because this book is not written by man. It's God's book, okay? The Spirit of God gave us these words, and you're not going to get it without the Spirit of God teaching you, showing you, enlightening you, illuminating your understanding. The, the Bible is a spiritual book that is not discerned by human intelligence. Now, I, we're not going to have these scriptures on the screen, but I decided I want to look at them uh, so we didn't prepare it. But go to 1 Corinthians 2 and look at a few verses in this chapter. We must have the Spirit of God to understand the spiritual words of God. Now, if you're not saved... You don't have the Spirit of God. You can pick up a Bible and learn some facts and some basic things. But as far as the spiritual meaning, as far as enlightenment, that comes from the Holy Spirit. And uh, now when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And, and he'll, he'll teach you the things of God as you believe His words. 
But again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how intelligent you think you are. It doesn't matter how much training you've had and your education and all of that. Like I said before, I'm not against education. I'm just against the wrong kind, But which is a lot of it that's out there. But I'm telling you, you you've got to be spiritual to know the Word of God. That comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Now, he's rebuking in the context, he's rebuking the church at Corinth. They were carnal. and they, In other words, they were walking after the flesh as men, and they were impressed by the wisdom of men. And he shows that the wisdom of men is foolishness to God. The wisdom of God is foolishness to men. You've got to take your pick. I'd rather be a fool in the eyes of the world than a fool in the eyes of God. So I'm going to follow the wisdom of God. But I'm going to say this. When it comes to the Bible issue, you've got to watch out for this. I've seen a lot of people approach it with the wisdom of men. It is the Bible. You have to approach it in faith by the Spirit of God. You know, so keep that in mind. He said, Came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. The King James translators were brilliant men as far as their education and training was concerned. Nobody today is even qualified to be on that board of translators. But you know what? My faith is not in their wisdom. My faith is in the power of God. You know how we got this King James Bible? The power of God. Yeah, you see, God's not taking a nap in the dispensation of grace. Okay, he's still at work. And there are those out there who act like God's not involved in any way in this world. Uh, sorry, but I believe the word of God, and I, and I know what Paul taught on these matters, and, and I've got a whole message where we deal with that, but I'm going to tell you this. This King James Bible is an example and an illustration of God's working and being involved because God said he would preserve his words. He didn't say the, that translators would, that men would. He said he would. And when they produced this Bible, it was beyond their capability. Those Anglicans were not dispensationalists, but this is a dispensational masterpiece. <laughs> how do you explain that? It's the Spirit of God at work. That's how. And so our faith needs to stand in the power of God. Now he said... He's talking about, in, and I'm not going to read, I, I thought about reading the whole chapter, but for time we'll just skip down a little bit here. He's talking about knowing the deep things of God, and he's talking about the wisdom of God in a mystery, that hidden wisdom that God ordained before the world, as it says in verse 7, unto our glory. Talking about the, God's eternal purpose in the body of Christ in this age of grace. But here's the thing, verse 9, as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So you're not going to discern this through your human ability by what you see and what you hear and what you can understand humanly. How does it come? But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That we might know these things. The Spirit of God will enlighten us. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The things here are the words. Where are the spiritual words? Jesus Christ said the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. 
Spiritual words are words given by inspiration of God. He said, we, we are speaking these things. This is not man's wisdom. This is that which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And he's showing that the natural man can't receive it because he doesn't have the spirit. The spiritual man is the one who has the spirit but also yields to him and walks in him because... There are people who are saved and have the Spirit, but they still walk after the flesh and they're carnal. But this issue of, I'm just saying there's so much in this chapter, of course, to talk about, but my point is, you know, it comes from the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible is a spiritual book that is only spiritually discerned, and that comes by the Spirit of God. And I'm going to tell you this right now, that the Holy Spirit will not illuminate the understanding of those who don't believe the Word of God. This is not going to happen. You want to know why? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? Hebrews eleven six, 6, and Paul said, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And if you come to this book in pride and your human ability to try to grasp it, it's going to be closed to you. 